Okay, so Be'ezras Hashem, we're continuing with our weekly series of Shirim on the Torah of Recovery with the Light Revealed. And in this week's Parsha, we encounter the secret of the Korbanos. We encounter the Mishkan in its establishment. We encounter the uh, appointing of the Kohanim, the mission orientation of the Kohanim, and the process of bringing the Korbanos, of the Avoid of the Kohen, to elevate those animals, those elements of creation, those elements of Doimim, Sameya, Chaim, Medaber, all elements of organic and inorganic matter, that ultimately all of those things come brought to the Mizbeach in the Mishkan, in the Beis HaMikdash, to be brought back upwards to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And within the framework of Korbanos, there's many, many different categories of Korbanos, but one of the ideas that comes out of this seemingly difficult to understand concept of korbanos, of animal sacrifice, of elevating physicality upwards towards spirituality, is that what the korban represents is kirva. What the korban represents is the ability to be drawn close, to come closer, to come closer, to bring oneself closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, whether the bringing oneself closer comes about as a previous moment of separation, which is the secret of the Korban in the Makam of Tshuva, that the Korban brings a person close after they have severed some element of connection, or if the Korbanos are seen simply as a way of drawing myself close, irrespective of anything that has distanced me, but rather the essential drive at the core of the human being is a desire to be miskarev to HaKadosh Baruch Hu a burning desire, a meaningless desire that is not built upon any external or internal form of meaning. It's rather built upon its irreducible self, which is the burning desire at the heart of each and every thing, each and every person, each and every yid, to return back to that place of connectivity to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the secret of the true goodness, of Kirvas Aleichem Litov. That the entirety of our lives can be seen in two lenses. One is something that takes me away from my connection to Hashem, and one is something that brings me closer to my connection to Hashem. Anything that distances me, anything that takes me away, anything that keeps me stuck in the mindset that there is some division between me and my innermost point of my heart and my own vulnerability and the goodness of Akadish Baruch Hu can be seen as something that takes a person away from the innermost connectivity that always exists with Akadish Baruch Hu. And any thought, action, behavior within the framework of healthy, functional, spiritual development is going to be seen as something that brings me closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And it's not that it's dependent on some mechanism. The inner mechanism is the awareness that what I'm doing brings me closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the belief that I can become close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Now, this nature of a desire towards closeness is not built upon some pre-existing understanding of I want closeness to God and therefore I'm going to desire it. What pre-exists all of that is simply the reality of yearning and desire to connect to something which is not present, to come closer to something. Inherent with the human spirit is the condition that it seeks more. The soul is an element of moreness. It's a perpetual seeking of moreness because it desires more than what this world has to offer. And as a result of desiring more than this world has to offer, not because of eyes that are desirous or cravenous eyes that seek to fill its appetite and are unpleasant and are unsatisfied, but rather, as Chazal tell us, the dissatisfaction at the core of the soul, which is perpetually driven to seek a, a more proximate connection, to come closer, to be mock of myself, that stems from the fact that the materiality of this world simply cannot satisfy the nature of the soul. It's not that there's not enough. It's not that there's not enough. It's simply that the material of it doesn't speak to the materiality of what the soul needs. The soul needs something else. The soul craves connectivity to the infinite. And therefore, anything in this world is going to, by definition, be finite. And it keeps us stuck. And it doesn't satisfy that desire that we have to come closer to that thing which we can't even put into words. And because of that, because we can't find satisfaction to this ever-burning desire towards coming closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to connecting to all that is right and good and all right in my existence in the world and in other people, because I can't find satisfaction to that craving, because in truth that craving can't be satisfied, I assume that it's simply because I haven't found the proper tools to satisfy that craving, and I keep upping the ante of trying to use a different substance, a different object, a different idea, a different human element to try and satisfy that desire. And ultimately, we know what that brings to. It brings to addiction. It brings to destruction. It brings to loss of life. It brings to an overwhelming of the self, a shvira, a riboy oros, and all of the different destructive things that come about when a person tries to find the right object to satisfy the craving of the soul. 
because the only thing that will satisfy the craving of the soul is the recognition that the soul will never be fully satisfied other than coming to terms with the perpetual craving. The craving of the soul pre-exists any deficiency. It is the very fount at which the self emerges, that ra'ava deravin, that yearning desire that burns towards or in sof kavyachol, towards the infinite, towards that higher power which cannot be placed into words, but it can be known in the unknowingness of the heart. Every element of our experience is directed towards that place. Every defense mechanism is sur surrounding that place. Every struggle that we have is coming from that place. Every symptom that we have to one degree or another. I'm not speaking psychiatric or material symptoms. I'm talking spiritual symptoms, but it all comes from that one unsatisfied desire and misinterpretation of what the very core of our self is, which is a burning desire to come closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to find unity, to find calmness, to find okayness, to find all rightness, to find rest, to find joy, to find simplicity, to find belief, to find silliness, to find laughter, all of those things, to find love, to find connection, to find comfort and suspension of disbelief and reduction of anxiety. All of those things is where the soul is yearning towards because all of those things are symbolic of one singular thing, which is the infinite light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, And that is the secret of the ever present nature of wanting to come closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But because we can't live in a place of perpetual closeness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, because we have to be aware of a separation from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, in order to come back to that recognition that ultimately the ultimate goodness in this reality is Kir Vaseleikim Litov, a closeness and a proximity to my creator, to the source of all things, to that place of all rightness, where I know that no matter what is going on in the world, it's okay because it's going on within the concept of the capital O, capital K, okayness, which is Havad Eishem Okein Tilaso. And when I find that comfortable place, I'm able to reorient through the lens of acceptance everything about myself and about my life. I'm not stopping to engage in life. It's just with a new lightness of being, an unbearable lightness of being, which knows that the core of itself, that there's a v'tizchak le'omachon aruchharon waiting to happen, that there's a laughter that emerges at the last day when a person seemingly has given up their hope. And because we need to dip into that distance, because the Mishkan has to be taken down, because there are going to be times of rechuk, because there's going to be moments where the soul does not feel connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So therefore the Karbanos cannot take place at all times. Kirvas Aleikim cannot take place at all times. One can never be truly connected to the infinite higher power that they connect to perpetually, because then that perpetuality of it grows boring and it takes away the pleasure and the spiritual benefit that comes from connecting to God. Because the spiritual benefit is the reduction of the suffering. And the more I remember the difficulty and then I come back to a place of closeness, that's going to be mamtik even more. So there has to be a rechuk prior to the next kirov. And so because kirva saleikim litov, because closeness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu cannot exist fundamentally at every moment in a revealed way, so there's the institution kavyachal of korbanos, which are the same thing as tefillah, and tefillah is the same thing as korbanos, which is the moments that we are able to reveal that inherent connection that is always there. The, the burning desire is always there, but the korban is a specific moment, a specific act, a specific place, a specific gesture, a specific way of being that represents the true recognition that in truth, all I want is closeness to you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Ah, 23 hours of the day may have forgotten that notion and I'm left with the symptoms of not knowing what it is that my soul or body wants. But one moment a day, three times a day, however many times a day a person does it, we reconnect our minds through hakrava sakorvan of attention, of sacrificing inattention on the altar of serving a Kaddish Baruch Hu for the sake of that hiskashus, that attention, that symptom of the mind to connect to the fact that Hashem, this is what I truly want. I want to bring a korban to you. I want to come closer to you. I want to let go of myself. I want to bring everything to you. I want to speak to you about everything. I want to reveal everything to you. I want to give it all over to you. I want to acknowledge my full and utter powerlessness in the face of your all-powerfulness. The korban is that moment, that place where the self, the time, and the orientation, the oilam, shana, nefesh, kohen, in mishkan, in kodesh akadashim, with the right timing of the korban, all things align. So that particular practice of korban, of hakravas of korban, which can be through prayer, which can be through whatever gesture that we engage in, but it's specifically giving all of ourselves over to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Ah, and it's only one moment, it's only two moments a day that I'm revealing the actual inherent connection through an active participation in bringing a korban. Nevertheless, the fact that I could bring a korban once or twice reveals that in truth, the perpetual reality of my mind is in a state of desiring to bring a korban. 
that when it comes to Kedusha, when it comes to spirituality, when it comes to our best selves, the sudden breakthrough of the best parts of ourselves and our amuna and our desire that breaks on through to the other side and simply cries out, Shema Yisrael, and Ayim Ekoim Kavodo, that all we want and all we know that we don't know and all that we know that we know that we don't know, all of the different knowings and not knowings all go to that singular place of Kirva Soleikim Litov. I want to be connected. I want things to be aligned and I want the all rightness of all things by being connected to the all powerful one. And by revealing that even once or twice a day, it's not simply, oh, it's a sudden deviation from the norm. It's a revelation retroactively that the innermost place of a person, of a Jewish soul, is perpetually in that state of connectivity. The moment-to-moment -moment acts of revealing the desire towards connectivity are not sudden departures from a typical place of not wanting connectivity, but rather they come to reveal that which is always present, always perpetually present, which is the secret of always desiring to come closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. As Rav Kook Slusa Ganalinu said that Hanashama Tabinim is Palelas, the soul is perpetually davening, the soul is perpetually in a lovesickness of desiring and yearning to connect to that which is good and right and true and honest and, and, and comforting in this world. But there's a terrifying voice of sounds in this world that blots out that perpetual prayer. And therefore we have to have three times a day, however many times we daven and open up our mouths to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, where we reveal the burning desire that exists underneath all of the concealment. We wish we could be davening all day. We wish we could have Kirva Salaikim Litov all day, but we know that there's a descent prior to the next descent. And it's those moments of Korban in our lives, of his karbus, that we have to believe in them more than they tell us about ourselves. We have to believe that this action right now is in truth Megala. It, it gives a revelation to the true nature of myself, which is just the desire to come closer to you, Hashem. And that's the secret of Eish Tamid al Mizbeach Tukad. Eish Tamid Tukad al Mizbeach Tamid. That there's a fire that's perpetually burning on the Mizbeach. Ah, the Mizbeach is only being used in particular moments. I reveal my best self only in particular moments, in the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, in the moments of calmness. And the rest of the day, I'm stuck in stuckness and distance. Nevertheless, what the bringing of the Korban, even once in a person's life, represents is that in truth there's a perpetual fire of connectivity that is burning at the core of the soul, revealing that every aspect of myself is seen as just another attempt at tefillah. My struggles are an attempt at tefillah. My success is out of my struggles an attempt at tefillah. The success within the struggle, the struggle within the success, they're all elements of tefillah, talking to spouse, to family, to other, to work, whatever it is, it's all tefillah. It's all being makriv that korban to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's all bringing that place where all of us is revealed, that vulnerability of self on the Mizbeach. And to bring it up to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to give it over to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the act of complete and utter powerlessness, like the Korban Oila. I give everything over to you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Rabbi Nachman says it's specifically Machapra on those places of complete and utter confusion. In complete and utter confusion, a person just gives more of themselves over. That we give it all over to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We let go and we let God. We say, I am no longer taking responsibility over myself. And then I can develop the sense of responsibility of myself. Because only when I slacken the grip at the wheel can I actually begin to play my role, which is trying my best and doing my best and serenity prayer in each and every situation. But ultimately, it's the small gestures of goodness in our life, which are far bigger than what they appear to be, because what they do is they reveal the inherent nature of connectivity that exists underneath all the folds of concealment. By Kachim, there's a specific concept of stamalishma, that when something is consecrated for a sacred purpose, ultimately, until something comes along and says absolutely not, and that we are reorienting the purpose of this, we have to assume that things are continuing in the direction of goodness. A person needs to trust the inner motivation of the self to uncover what the soul truly desires at the core of every craving, at the core of every desire, which is Kirvas Aleikim Litov. And this is Savas B'nai Aaron. This is the command. The command, in Savila Avoid Zara. The only way to rectify Avoid Zara, Avoid Zara, is the assumption that I can find satisfaction in anything other than the perpetual yearning towards Akadish Baruch Hu. And it's the tzav of the korbanos that comes to teach us that the only way to satisfy that craving is to come to realize that the craving is the way of connecting to Akadish Baruch Hu in each and every moment. And in that way, we're machaper of desire. We get rid of the need to find some particular object or substance that can provide us with that sense of connectivity. And we begin to find connectivity within the faith of connectivity itself, within believing that we're connected. Forget about feeling that a person is connected. A much higher level is believing that a person is connected. I believe that I'm connected. I believe that I'm makar of myself to you, Rabbi Nishlaylam.
even when I don't feel it. And that's the secret of the ash that's burning perpetually on the Mizbeach. And when we uncover the fact that it's perpetually burning and it's always there and it's never not there and it's always present and it's never absent, so then anytime we feel distant from it, it's not about recultivating all of the tools necessary to rebuild that original love that now has been extinguished. Nothing is ever extinguished. In Silat Moichan Oilam, as the Torah Stacham says, nothing ever deviates. The spiritual presence leaves an irreducible trace, meaning to say it's always available for a person to reaccess. And the revelation of once or twice a day where we can be mapped of ourselves to go against our better judgments and to bring ourselves closer to the all rightness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the goodness in this world is a megala that we can always dip back into it. It's always there. It's always present. And it shifts from being a question of presence and absence, which means if it's present, good. If it's absent, then I'm done. And it begins a process of concealment and revelation, which means that if it's revealed, great. But if it's concealed, it doesn't mean it's not there. It's still there. It's just there in a concealed type of way. And that's the secret of the Korban, of bringing ourselves closer, of developing more and more moments of korbanos, of tefillah, of bringing all of ourselves to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to reveal that ultimately the only thing that we've ever desired is connectivity to the infinite goodness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to the infinite light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which rests beyond comprehension, beyond words, beyond names, beyond identification, but rather is known intuitively within the heart of each and every person in accordance with their own spiritual substructure and their own spiritual orientation and the conjecture of their own heart, which is built upon the amuni yesoidis, which is built upon the irreducible place of faith, the elasticity of faith that goes wherever a person goes, meaning to say we can always choose to say yes to the moment and return back to that place of unconditional love and connectivity to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and to be mamtik, to sweeten all difficulty and to connect ourselves further and further, to purify ourselves and to elevate over and over to reveal the light of our own lives with HaKadosh Baruch Hu Be'ezrus Hashem.